What is going on, Patriot Gardeners? It's your buddy Murdoch. And today, we've got a special video. That's right. As you can see, we have the indoor growing area all revamped, cleaned, sanitized, and reset up. Specifically designed for our northern gardeners who might be stuck indoors dealing with some snow. That's right. Today we're going to be doing a video showing you guys how it may be snowing outside, but that doesn't mean you have to be down and out. You still have every opportunity for under a hundred bucks to have a small area, bless you, in your home set up to grow a lot of really nice vegetables. Now you guys have seen the videos and some of the photographs that I've done on the tomatoes. So you know how well this setup works. Um, we've got four bulbs. Let me see, hopefully this doesn't blind the camera too bad. Um, we're running four bulbs here. So two sets, one red orange spectrum and one blue green spectrum. Um, so two of each to give a, a more broad of a spectrum of light. Um, these are four foot bulbs and it does a, a very, very nice job. And I've incorporated these trays here, um, which actually, if I stand back here just a little bit, they fit perfectly. I could actually fit six of them underneath this grow setup and it would fill the grow space perfectly. Uh, unfortunately, I wanted to run some red solo cups. So, well, here we are. Uh, the advantage of doing these is that after I get them up to a certain point, I want to get them outside. I can grab these trays, slide them right on out of the garden here and take them outside and get them some sunshine or put them where I want on a window ledge or wherever that may be. Um, these boxes specifically that I have here are 24 inches long, eight inches wide and about seven inches tall, just under seven inches tall. Um, so they had a, they hold a pretty good amount of medium inside of them. So I've already taken the liberty of planting up the red solo cups. Uh, we'll go over this. We've got some uh, broccoli. We've got some shallots, some red onion, sweet red onions. Uh, we even have a very special one going. We're going to be trying some Mexican papaya. We've got some hot Anaheim some thin cayenne peppers and that's another mexican papaya back there and that that my friends those little cups with the plastic on top those are for another video on another day in about three or four days they should germinate and i'll actually be able to update and do a seed to harvest video in segments of course as we grow along but yeah that's a surprise so yeah, let's take a look at what we got on the table today. And you can really mix this up. You know, make yourself happy. Not only grow stuff that you're gonna eat. I mean, I've got this lettuce gourmet blend. I've never tried before. Looks pretty nice and it's got a wide variety of uh, short greens in it. Um, I'm gonna do some radishes for my dad. I'm gonna try some celery, get them about halfway up and keep the bugs off, which is always a problem with celery and take it outside when they're nice and mature. We're going to get some snow peas and some peas going on. We're going to try some slow bolting cilantro. Um, like I said, we've got the red onions, the Mexican papaya. And I want to give a special thanks to uh, Mrs. Barbara. Thank you so much, dear, for all of the wonderful seeds you've sent. And uh, I've had a great time growing them. And they've actually produced quite a few other seeds that we'll be sending out for Christmas. So the uh, Mad Scientist Clause is going to be mailing out some stuff for Christmas, but you'd never heard anything about that here. So we're going to do some kale and we're actually, we got uh, two different varieties of kale. There's our broccoli. Check this out. This is the coolest stuff ever. And if you guys know anything about Baker Creek heirloom seeds, these guys are absolutely awesome. You'll love the products you get from them. Um, here's another kale that we're going to do today. Kale scarlet. Look how pretty that is. It'll be a good start to get indoors as soon as we get past that frost, get them outside, get them transplanted, and boom. We've got an explosive spring. And we're, we 
weeks or potentially depending on how we manage our beds and how we manage our plants, you can potentially be a month or two ahead of schedule and hit the ground running. And for those of you who are in zones like four, five, six, where you only get those amount of months of growing time every week really counts. And if you can cut two months off of your growing season, um, it, wow. I mean, what a difference that would make. And not only that, like I said, while it's snowing, it's dreary, it's raining, it's whatever it is, blowing cats and dogs outside, you can be inside with your nice little lights set up, put some music on in the background, plant some lettuce, have a happy little garden, and totally find your little zen place. So without further ado, let's get this party started. We're actually gonna work our way from the back towards the front. I'm gonna try to get my camera set up here without it either shutting off or falling, which is a high possibility it could do either. Let's see. Nope, looks like I pulled it off. So, we're gonna start in the back there and, you know, get creative when you do this stuff. You can see here, I've got some little shish kebab sticks. And you know what? We're gonna be utilizing these and uh, doing our snow peas back here in the back. And we're gonna do some sugar snap peas right here in the front. And then when this bed matures, I can take it outside in about four to six weeks. They can take the frost and they can take a light frost, no problem. And I'm gonna put it right underneath the trellis and let it grow up. And in about four weeks, I'll start another bed to replace that one once these are matured and done growing. That way I can have a rotational garden always going. So let's go ahead and get some of our snow peas. And for this one, we're gonna be doing the uh, Fairy Morris snow peas, the melting sugar. These are so good and so sweet. It is unbelievable. So I know a lot of people like to soak their peas overnight before they plant them. Growing indoors, that really isn't a necessity. You can go from bag to planter. And the reason being is you are more in control indoors of the moisture evapor evaporation that's gonna happen inside your soil. And that's typically why you would soak them overnight is to give them a little bit of a jump start and uh, make sure that they're not gonna dry out after planting. So we're gonna take our famous handy dandy expensive, expensive planting tool here, the indispensable popsicle stick. And we're actually gonna come right over here and right in front of each one of these, I'm just gonna go ahead and just stir a little hole. I'm gonna go about maybe half inch to three quarters of an inch deep. And I think we can get, oh, I don't know, about 10 or so maybe down the face of this. So we'll get these planted up and I think we can, you know what? We got room for one more right there. There we go. And because you're indoors, you don't have the difference of temperature fluctuating back and forth as much. You're much more in control of the, uh, the scenario and what's actually going on in the garden, which makes germination a lot better. And under these lights, which average a temperature of about 74 to 76 degrees, depending on what the uh, ambient air temperature is, it is perfect for the germination. Okay, so we got those guys done. We just come back through, pat some dirt right over the top of them, just like that. Do, 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 do. All right. Now we're going to jump directly over to our sugar snaps. Um, these are really, really good. Um, you can just pull these right off the vine and just pop them in your mouth and go. Just pull the string and, and eat it. The, the pods are so sweet. It is, a, it is just wonderful in a salad. So, and like I said, you know, get creative when you do this kind of stuff. You know, you don't have to use the popsicle sticks or the shish kebab sticks. I mean, you can, build yourself a little trellis, you know, do whatever you want to do indoors, you know, get creative. Uh, the only restriction I would say you have is in the beginning, 
that your plants are going to need to be between two and three inches away from the lights. So if you put popsicle sticks in or shish kebab sticks like this, well, obviously that's going to keep the light away. As you can see in this bed here, I have intentionally placed this specific bed in the very back. That is so it is going to catch a lot of this real bright refractory light that you see right here. And it's going to catch the last two sets of bulbs on the face. So these peas will grow just fine with that ambient light. And I can actually bring the lights all the way down to right here. So when they pop up, they're going to get lit up just fine. And as soon as they get up to here, I mean, pretty much all the plants are going to grow at, at about that rate. And if not, we can always lift each bed around to raise it up to make each of them even. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and poke us some holes. And, you know, like I said, it's, it's fun to be practical when you're in the garden and be like, oh, my family eats this, and so I should only grow that. But if there's something that you see that you really want, or you really want to try to grow, go for it. I mean, what's it going to hurt? Worst case scenario, you end up with a beautiful plant and some unexpected surprise. Lord knows we've had enough of those in the last year in our gardens. So why not? And you may also be noticing that I'm only dropping one pea in here. Because the, German, the germination uh, time on peas is only a couple days, I'm going to know real quick if I got some issues going on here. And it's nothing to come back and just drop another one right in the soil um, to play catch up on a couple days. That's not really that big of an issue. A lot of folks will plant two or three and then go out there with a pair of scissors in about two weeks and start chop, chop, chopping down little baby plants. And well, I'd just rather save the seeds and you know, use them where I need them, not where I don't. So we're going to, now that we've got that all done, what's the next step gardeners? That's right. We're going to water it. Well, and watch it grow. Thank you, Mr. Alabama gardener. I'd rest your soul. If you guys don't know this little hack right here, well, you should basic little water bottle. And you take uh, one of your mom's sewing needles or grandma's sewing needles and just poke you about 15, 20 holes in the top of it. That's it. Don't need to heat it up or nothing. These lids are typically soft enough. You can just push it right on through and it works just, I mean, absolutely wonderfully. So in our next bed here, as we move along, I thought we would mix it up and do some homogenous planting. You know, a couple that are practical that I am going to use that can be removed from this and or transplanted in different locations throughout the garden as they grow along. So in this one, we're going to do celery along the back row here and some cilantro up front. So for our celery, we are going to be doing tall Utah 5270R improved non GMO. Uh huh. We'll see about that with a uh, number like that. You never know. You know, it just looked like nice celery, and this is what they had available, so I grabbed it. Now, celery, you can go a little bit more shallow, and another cool thing about celery is even if you overseed, you can always come back and take the little plants out when they're very small and start moving them around. So once again, we're going to take our handy dandy little stick here and we're going to drag us a trench about, oh, maybe a quarter of an inch deep, not very deep, all the way from end to end. And then we're going to take a little pinch of seeds, kind of like so, oh, we're going to spill some in this thing here, so. And we're going to come right along and we are just going to sprinkle them right in this little trough. That's it.
Alrighty. After that's done, we're going to just very gently just kind of pinch that trough closed and we're not going to press down. We, let me say that again. We are not going to press that soil down. We're going to continue on with this bed and jump directly into the cilantro. You'll understand why we didn't push that soil down on top of those seeds in just one moment. Again, the cilantro does not need to be seeded very deep maybe a quarter of an inch, half inch. Um, it's okay for your seeds to be a little shallow. Um, that's a lot better than them being a little too deep. So for this, we're going to be doing our uh, slow bolt cilantro, our seeds of change, 100% organic. Uh, this stuff is really good. Although Last year, we had the issues where it wasn't exactly very slow bolting around, was it? Nope. This stuff made it about a week outside and decided it wanted to bolt, which ruined everything. So, we're going to take us a little pinch, right about like that. And once again, we're going to come right along in our trough here. And just sprinkle our seeds out, trying to drop one, you know, about every half inch or so. Like I said, these plant these ones are not meant to make it to full maturity in this planter. Although I'm sure we could clip down a few and thin them out and allow that to happen, that's not the overall plan. The plan with these is to get them up a little bit, let them grow indoors where it's very nice and they're safe from all the pest birds, rats, snails, bugs, pill bugs, earwigs, and any other thing that would love to devour them as infants. So now that we've got them all trashed up, we're not going to press those down either. Now the reason being is when you do your first watering on your seeds, it's going to settle the dirt down around them just fine. When you press seeds down and you're not going to water them in, um, it actually compacts the dirt. And the very first thing to compact is the least resistant part of the soil, which is guess what? Where your seed is and that's all the little oxygen pockets that are directly around it and that's what your seed needs to put those roots out into now just a slight little watering down like this right here and that's it that's all it's going to need because we're going to be paying attention to this daily and taking a look at stuff and well that will definitely get her done. Now, this one in the front right here, we're actually going to do a uh, gourmet blend. This one, I have our packet here, is going to be quite a few different varieties of lettuce. It's supposed to be short leaf, so hopefully we will be harvesting this indoors. And this is a way you can finish um, some lettuce and stuff like that indoors is to get one of these little planters or the rain gutter trough and uh, go ahead and put you some nice soil inside of it and uh, plant it up, set it next to the window, get your light, whatever you want to do. Now because this is lettuce, it needs to be a light, a light uh, sowing. What I'm going to do is actually just take my little popsicle stick here and I'm just going to kind of go back and forth and loosen this soil up so it's real loose on top. Real nice and crumbly and loose. And like I said, this one we expect to harvest indoors. We'll be clipping on this probably in about two, three weeks and getting us some nice fresh salad greens out of it. It'd be absolutely delicious. And so we're going to go for broke with this one and just take the whole package, you know, about like that. And we're going to take and just go back and forth like this and just sow these seeds all over. Now, most of the time, if I was outdoors, I would use the old Alabama method and I would mix these seeds with about two cups of potting soil and just sit there and mix it up really good for a couple minutes. And that actually gives you the best and most even distribution you will have ever seen when you sow lettuce. 
this here, I just decided to all sprinkle them in there, whatever. Now I'm going to take this popsicle stick one time and I'm going to go back and forth just like this, just to knock some dirt around and maybe have those seeds just fall down in a little crack or, you know, a little crevice right anywhere around in the planter. And then we're going to water it well and watch it grow. And this will settle the soil down just perfectly. Just like a very light rain would do out in the garden. Right after you sowed your seeds. How perfect is that? And these bottles also, you know, are really, really good for when the plants are very, very small. Because you can sit and just bury, you know, you can sit and drip and do a few drops at a time or a very light shower. Um, it gives you a lot of control on what you're doing. All right. So let's move over to our final bed here. Let's see if I can angle this thing down just a little bit more. There we go. Okay, so in the back of this over here, we're going to do some French breakfast um, radishes. Then we're going to do some iceberg radishes on this side. And we're going to actually try to finish this end in here. These ones up front, we've got, we're going to do the scarlet kale and the Casper kale, which we're going to want to transplant those out into the garden. So let's get these French breakfast in the ground. Do, do. If I can find them. Oh, there they are. Ha. Huh. These are really, really, really tasty. I highly recommend these. If you like radishes, then you'll love French breakfast. And I'm gonna what I'm gonna do again is go ahead and just make me I think I can do two little rows right here. And I want to dig about a half inch little trough. And these I actually will try to be a little bit more careful as I spread them out. But once again, you can always thin out with the radishes since we're going to be finishing them indoors. I've never actually attempted to do them indoors, so this should be an interesting event. And I think we'll just put a couple more there, maybe a couple more there. And with these guys, we're just going to come back and just kind of do this and just tap them down in place in the little rows we want them to settle into. And radishes you do. We'll go ahead and pull some dirt right over the top of them, just like so, and pull some of this on top of them. Oh, get down there. And there we go. Now let's get those icebergs in. We got Icicle, the uh, short top, which I figured, you know, it says container variety, so we're going to put that to the test here for sure. And I'll be posting up videos. I'm going to try to get one up at least once a week so you guys can see the growth rate. And I'll be posting up pictures as we go along for sure. And for those of you who don't know, you can come and check out a lot of this stuff over on our Telegram channel. And we have the best gardeners and the best group of friends that you have ever imagined. I mean, there's really not a gardening question that comes up that we can't get answered over there. So if you want, I invite you to come check it out. Even if you've never grown anything, we'll show you how to get it done. I mean, look at this. We're growing radishes inside the house. Who would have ever thought, right? So I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle these down in this little trough. And then you get me a couple more. And I'm kind of excited. This is my dad's favorite. This is the radishes, so I enjoy growing them. And that's another thing. You know, you can always incorporate the, the garden with the family. Those of you who have little kids, 
I mean, you could sit radishes sprout in two or three days. I mean, you got to have something that keeps their attention. But who wouldn't like to do this? Even green beans or anything you got to throw in there. Okay, so now we're going to step it up. We're going to do our scarlet kale and our Casper kale. And I think, kids, we're going to do one little summary and call this one a done deal. Now the kale too, we're going to be transplanting these out and I'm going to be removing them when they're very, very, very small. So I'm going to get away with actually seeding quite a few. So with those, I'm just going to loosen the soil up here and get that big chunk out of here. And if you don't know about the soil mix that I use, um, there are the other videos on the YouTube channel here that show how I make the indoor potting mix. A uh, basic rundown is one third uh, compost, one third uh, either indoor potting mix or above ground uh, raised bed potting mix, Kellogg's. And then about now 15% peat moss, about 5% perlite added to it to add for a little bit of drainage. And then some earthworm castings and the basic uh, Job slow release uh, plant food mixed in there. All right, now that we got that one done, and you can go check those videos out. Um, they are in the channel description and link. So, so we're gonna do our Casper kale. Look at that. That is so awesome. I should be able to get, you know, 10 or 15 little babies out of here and then get them out in the garden and really get them going. And the key to this, like I said, is not only to grow practical stuff, but to grow stuff that you're going to enjoy. You know, if you want, throw a box in there that's got some flowers. I know looking out the window and seeing snow and gray all the time can't exactly be fun. So throw something with some color in there. Grow some pansies or some little, you know, sunflowers or, you know, pretty much anything. Some little snapdragons. Add a little color to your day. So we're going to go ahead and get these guys all sprinkled in right here. And just kind of lightly tap them down. And since we got this whole bed planted, we're going to go ahead water it in and that's going to be it I'll check on these guys every day give them a little tiny bit of water to make sure they don't dry out on the surface other than that um, indoors typically the humidity is high enough that you, they really don't dry out if you have that issue a saran wrap for a day or two for germination will cure that problem Folks, I hope you really have enjoyed this. Um, I know it's been a little bit since I've done one of the gardening videos. Um, I'm trying to get them done as best I can with everything going on and having to work and take care of kids and life and the garden channel. But I really hope you enjoyed this one. And like I said, I'll be posting up uh, updates weekly on this so you guys can come and grow with me. Even if you can't get a setup going, you can come here and live vicariously right through this garden here. Love you all. Hope you learned something. And if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. And I will get back to you as soon as I can. And if I can't get it answered, well, I know a whole group of gardeners who can. Love you all. God bless. Murdoch out.